We got Luis Pena, Violent Bob Ross, back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Mike Trezano at UFC Fight Night 139 on November 10th. Luis, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing great, James. Just, you know, here at the, the new place in uh, Gilroy, settling in, getting ready to start camp today, actually. That's excellent, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, you got some, uh, you, you said you were rooming with uh, one of your coaches from the Ultimate Fighter, Duran Wynn, I heard. Yeah, yeah, actually, me, Duran, and then a uh, uh, training partner of ours, Kyle Driscoll. Excellent. Well, that's good. I'm glad the uh, moves worked out well for you. And uh, if anyone's been following you on social media, uh, of course, uh, big news for you in your personal life. I know that you met your biological father and you had that tweet out there saying, you know, you're more nervous for this than, than going into a fight. How did that all go, man? Because that's uh, obviously a big deal for someone like yourself to, to meet your biological father. It went really well, actually. You know, um, I think we're going to be able to build a pretty, like, solid relationship going forward. Um, it was really interesting, too. You know, uh, I actually got um an ancestry dna kit for christmas and when i first did it i got like a bunch of results that said you know third and fifth cousin and then out of nowhere like a couple weeks ago i got an email from ancestry dna and it said i had a new dna match and i'm, I'm looking at it and i'm going through all, all the information and, it, and it's showing me like that we match for all of the dna markers that i really didn't know where they came from because i've already met my biological mother i met her when i was 19 and um so like i'm going down and it says like the most likely relationship it's a child parent and i was like oh wow so like um lo and behold we started messaging each other through ancestry uh dna and we kind of confirmed that you know we were related that he was my dad so it was pretty interesting like and it was pretty uh cool meeting him you know because like i got uh, it was like one of those things my entire life I've, I'd always kind of ask, like, you know, where do I come from? And to finally have that question answered was uh, pretty amazing. I know, I bet, man. And good for you for following through on it and everything else. Um, is, is I guess he's based in California as well? No, no. Uh, I think he lives in Virginia. We met in St. Louis. I actually flew, I, I flew out to St. Louis to go meet him. Wow. Okay. That's good. So do you feel a bit of closure there just with the fact that, and, and you said there's going to be a relationship going forward. Um, is, is that, I guess, just, uh, you know, kind of one of those uh, things that you've sort of put to bed, the, the what if? Yeah, most definitely. It's, uh, that's, that's like the, one of the hardest things to grasp, you know, is like the in for my entire life for the past 25 years, you know, that was a driving force, you know, that what if question. And then like all of a sudden, two weeks ago, it got answered in an email. Very cool. Okay, well, uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, you, the relationship can get built uh, from there, man. That's uh, great to hear. And, of course, uh, we just had UFC 228 this past weekend. With everything that went on, did you get a chance to watch the card? Oh, yeah, no, I definitely watched the, the card. Um, you know, being having lived in St. Louis the past three years and training at the same gym that Tyron started out at, um, my, uh, my coach, Mike Rogers, was actually Tyron's high school wrestling coach. Uh, of, of course, you know, I, I'm very supportive. Uh, was, I was really uh, excited to see him uh, go out there and get the win. I honestly thought he was going to knock him out. I thought um, going into that, I figured Tyron would drop till until when get up. But then to see him sub him like that was uh, pretty amazing. Obviously, you got this fight coming together with Mike Trezano. Uh, were you expecting this next, or were, were you worried at all this fight might not happen? Um, I was. I was kind of. You know, I really was expecting this fight, but I'm not gonna lie. I was worried that it wouldn't happen. That they would want to uh, kind of build both of us. But in my opinion, this is the fight that makes the most sense uh, going forward for both of us. Yeah, I, I think we both need to see, you know, how it goes down. I mean, I think I, I already feel as if I know how it goes down, but I, it's my in, intention to prove it to the world. And obviously, uh, one of the big things is, uh, you, you know, you've got to see Mike, uh, you know, get, train and everything like that in your experience on the Ultimate Fighter. Like, how much of an advantage is that, do you feel like, heading into this fight, uh, knowing Mike a little bit just from the show? Um, I think it's a huge advantage, uh, no doubt. We trained before the uh, before the actual competition started, and then, um, you know, I got to watch him three times. Uh, I think I not necessarily that I know Mike. You know, he's he's definitely going to be working on stuff. He's going to be changing his game up from now until uh, November. But I feel as if I have a good uh, baseline of how he's going to come at me. Excellent. And uh, we've seen the photos and everything. You've been training a lot with Habib Nurmagomedov. Of course, he has his fight on October 6th. How's that going, getting to train with one of the best in the world? That's amazing. You know, words really can't describe uh, what it's like getting to train with the champ. The first time, you know, 
I remember the first time they said, Luis, uh, we need you to go train with Khabib. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, it was that I, – I, like, like, I was starstruck a little bit. I was like, oh, man, I'm getting to go train with the world champ. But then, like, the second time, it was just like, all right, it's on. Like, I got to go after this guy. And then ever since then, I, I feel as though I've started to gain his respect a little bit more. Um, and it's, you know, it's fun, you know, getting to go out there and get tested by the guy that's the best in your in the world at your weight class. You know, it's, it's like it, put, it lets you know exactly where you sit. And how are you structuring your training camp? Are you spending the entire camp at AKA, or will you go back to St. Louis and all and train a little bit? Oh, no. So, um... For the most part, I'll be here at AKA. So, like, from now until October 20th, I'll be here at AKA. And then October 20th, I'm going to go uh, to Colorado and finish out my training camp. Oh, great. Where are you training in Colorado? Uh, a multitude of places. I'll be training mainly at Pariah MMA in Colorado Springs. And then um, I'm going to try and get in um, at a couple different places. I know Raquel Pennington and it, uh, trains out there and, then like, um, there's Grudge MMA or Grudge, yeah, Grudge. I was I was thinking about hitting them them up, seeing if I could train out there. But uh, mainly this uh, little gym in Colorado, Colorado Springs called Pariah, and then I'm gonna see if DC can get me into the Olympic Training Center. Very cool. Yeah, use those connections for sure. Um, what about the weight cut? Like, when does that process start? You're a pretty big guy. I know you don't cut a ton of weight, but how, when does that process start for you? Um, depends on what you mean by like the weight cut, because like for me. Um, I, I kind of, I mean, the week of the fight, I kind of start, uh, you know, tapering down a little bit. And then I would say I don't cut the last, I don't try to cut the last five pounds until like an hour before weigh-ins. Okay. So really it's a, it's a last minute thing. You don't, you actually don't have to cut that much weight then I'm assuming. No, not really. I, I mean, so like it depends, you know, um, I've started the week of the fight at 175 before. I've started the week of the fight at 165. Um, it just, like I know I can get to 155 no matter what happens, no matter what the the situation is. Um, so like, but I, I just know between whatever happens, whatever I weigh, and whatever I'm gonna wake up at um, the the day or the day of weigh-ins, I try to cut that last like five to three pounds right then like an hour before because i don't like to be dry that long and you talked about potentially going to 45 at some point in your career is that the plan after this fight or do you just want to see how this fight goes and then sort of assess it at that point um yeah i kind of want to see how this fight goes and assess it but i i think after this fight i'm going to try a mock cut to 45 and then uh Depending on how easy or hard that is, difficult that is, you know, I'm going to go, uh, go forward from there. And do you feel like if you get this win here, you'll be the unofficially crowned Ultimate Fighter winner at Lightweight? I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. It just, I just want to prove to everyone that I was the best guy on the show. Okay, I like that. Um, I, kind of switching gears a little bit here. I know you're still relatively new in the UFC, but uh, is pro wrestling something that you'd ever consider doing down the line? Because you've got this, you know, you got the look, the violent Bob Ross look. The character itself is is done and, uh, you know, sort of made up and everything. Is that something you'd ever consider uh, maybe after your career is done? Um, no. <laughs> Not okay. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge, huge, don't get me wrong. I'm a huge WWE fan. Uh, like, the dude that just knocked out, um, Conor McGregor's teammate in Bellator with the sweet chin music. Like, that's exactly, like, that's what I call it. The sweet, you know, the Shawn Michaels sweet chin music. Like, but no, nah, there's no way I could ever get into WWE. I, a, I'm just way too small. And B, it's just not my thing. Okay, fair enough. But who are some of your favorite wrestlers? Uh, you talked a little bit about it there. Uh, or, like, are you currently watching it or did you watch it just growing up? Uh, I don't really, I, I stay, I don't currently watch it, but I stay um, up to date with it. Uh, I like Seth Rollins. Out of all like the new guys, he's probably my favorite. Um, and but like when it comes like my all time favorites, uh, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, um, The Undertaker, and The Rock. And this is going to be a great fight, man. It's coming up here on November 10th. It's UFC Fight Night 139. Uh, Luis, we'll have to catch up closer to fight time, but definitely wanted to get the initial interview. And uh, glad to see everything went well with your dad. Just remind people where, pe uh, where people can get a hold of you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours, man. Um, you can get a hold of me on social media, uh, at Violent Bob Ross on Twitter and Instagram. 
Uh, give a huge shout out to my sponsors, RDX Sports, Fuji BJJ, Aviles Translations LLC, Koi CBD, um, Armored Nutshells, and Art Street Wheel and Tire. And of course, want to give a huge shout out to all my teammates and coaches at AKA and then uh, St. Charles MMA and Team Voggy. Um, once again, thanks for having me on, James. I really appreciate it.